Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm checking out the Isheen X73 from Banggood.com. I first saw this one on Banggood's new arrivals page and I thought it looked pretty interesting. Initially I thought it was going to be another competitor to the recent range of micro quads that have been released such as the QX90, the QX80 and the Lantian. However it isn't and that is because this one has 7mm motors where all of the others have 8mm motors which means that this one is going to have a lot less power than those other ones. In fact, this guy is more of a competitor to this one which is the Blade Inductrix aka Tiny Whoop if you stick a camera on the top, change the motors out and battery etc. And as you can see, it has been inspired by it somewhat. We've got this blade protector around the edge and I have to say that all of these micro quads that have come out recently do have this guy to thank because they were a bit underground before and now they are absolutely booming and I am thrilled about that. So what do you get? Well of course we have the frame which is also the printed circuit board. Now I'm not really a fan of this because if they break then the whole quadcopter is written off. However, I've had a few like this and I've never broken one so I can't really complain about that really. It's really lightweight but I think for this motor size it's not lightweight. I think it's going to weigh about 40 grams in total which for 7mm motors is quite heavy and I have to say I've flown this already and it doesn't have a lot of power. It is really for just flying indoors. I did fly it outdoors and it was a very windy day and I didn't have much luck with it. I tried to do some acro and it wouldn't flip all the way around. There just wasn't enough power so this one really like I say a tiny whoop competitor rather than a full acro micro quad but of course it does do acro and I'll get onto that in a bit. So yeah we've got these 7mm motors those plug directly into the PCB here and we have a battery holder there and if I flip it around we have got a micro lossy connector there and then on top of the frame this is one of those little FreeSky D8 receivers that has been colored the same as the frame so this does bind to my Tyrannus which has the EU version of the firmware in D8 mode. One thing that I should say about all of these new quadcopters that support FreeSky is that I believe some of the European LBT firmwares do not have the D8 mode so before you get one of these just check that you can access that D8 mode. I do think you can put D8 mode on all of the Tyrannuses by updating the OpenTX software and firmware. However, my Tyrannus works as it's quite old now. But yeah, be aware of that. You can see there that the receiver does have a detachable antenna there. And moving up from there, we have this part of the frame which is plastic and then we have the camera this is one of those 170 degree cameras that we are used to it's very similar to the one on the QX80 and 90 however you can see this also has a detachable antenna and this is a sleeve dipole antenna rather than a cloverleaf antenna which is different from those other ones however I guess you could connect a cloverleaf antenna on there if you wanted but I do like these because they are more indestructible and you can see there it just sort of bends over in a crash not going to snap anything. Now it doesn't mention anywhere how many channels this camera has however there's quite a lot of dip switches on the back there so I imagine it's going to at least have 30 channels maybe even the 40 race band channels. I'm not too interested in how many channels it has as long as I can just change a couple in case I'm getting interference on it. But yeah, the camera has this yellow casing all around it and it actually comes detached out of the box and I do have something to say about that. I'm not too much of a fan of the way that the camera attaches. You can see there that I actually have a cable tie around mine and there's a little gap there and the camera can just ping off. Now in the box you are given this very tiny nylon screw with a nut on the end. Now you can see mine doesn't have a nut on the end anymore. That's because in a crash this just pinged off so the idea is that that goes through there and you tighten it up. However the camera does change its angle to the point where it can come off completely. So I just stuck on a cable tie there and did away with this because this camera is going to fly off every time you have a crash and you're either going to break this 
or lose it. And another good reason for using a tiny cable tie is you can feed this antenna up here as well. Now, out of the box, it comes just pointing straight across the props, which is no good. So one of the disappointing things with this quadcopter is that it doesn't come with a lot of stuff. In fact, this is pretty much all that you get. This and this. And also you are given this, which is a FTDI adapter, which goes into a four pin micro connector there. And yes, this is a Naze 32 brushed version. So you can install Betaflight on there, which I have done. And that just plugs into the side there and plugs into the computer. I installed Betaflight 3.0 on this thing because out of the box had a really early version of Clean Flight and didn't fly well at all. So it definitely needed the Betaflight flashing to it. Now you aren't given any spare props with this, which I think is a shame because I can't tell what brand these props are and because they are using these smaller motors, you can't say take some repurposed hubs and props and fit them on there. They just don't go on. They're the smaller motors and these props actually fit on there, which will be quite interesting to try, but I would have liked to have seen some spare propellers included because you're going to break them when flying this, especially indoors. You aren't given a battery either. One thing that I will say though is that it does fit a variety of different batteries. This battery holder is actually really good. Now they recommend a 350 milliamp battery. Now the closest I have to that is a 380 milliamp battery from my old Hubson H107D and it fits in there nicely. However, I don't get great performance out of it at all. In fact, I think, I don't know if it's this battery, but I was getting brownouts with the receiver. When I throttle up on a full battery, the motors just stop and it just falls out of the sky. And I was having that with a couple of batteries that I have as well. I don't think enough power is going to the receiver when on full throttle and it's just cutting out. In fact, you can see the bind light, which is on here, it's green. It flashes out when I throttle up fully. However, I don't get that problem with this battery, which is the Hubson H107D 500 milliamp, the upgraded battery. I should clarify that I actually, I do get the brownout issue, but you get a better flight time with this. With this battery, it does it pretty much straight away. And I also tried the 600 milliamp battery for the QX90 and QX80, and it does fit, and it does lift as well, but it's not really designed for it. You're not gonna get a decent flight time out of that. You're definitely gonna get diminishing returns putting a big battery on a quadcopter with only seven millimeter motors. Yeah, so I was a little bit disappointed about that. And another thing, another thing that I didn't think was great, and you can see the problem has occurred whilst I am reviewing this. You see, you get these little holders at the bottom, which you think, yeah, those look pretty nice, keep the motor wires nice and safe. You're going to lose these. They fall off straight away. They just are so loose. And I flew this about in the house, and... These were popping off left, right, and center, so when I'm flying this, I actually took these off, which means that the motors aren't protected underneath. So yeah, it definitely has some improvements to be made on this one, but I have, of course, bound it to my Tyrannus in D8 mode, and that wasn't a problem at all. But yeah, I would have liked to have seen spare parts, I'd like to have seen a battery, especially for the price, you know, it's around about the same price as the QX90 and 80, and you do get a battery with that, so I think they need to include this to get people's attention. So the way that you bind this is you hold down this bind button here and plug in the battery, and then in D8 mode on the Tyrannus, you press the bind button and then it should be bound. You can reset everything and go and take it for a fly and that's what I'm going to do now. I'm just flying indoors around the house today because it's nearly autumn here now and the wind is just too strong for this one. I did try and fly it outdoors, however those 7mm motors just aren't powerful enough to fly outside this time of year. I'm sure on a calm day it would be, but you will see here that indoors there is plenty of power to have fun.
You don't really need a lot of power to fly indoors. Sometimes it's a hindrance. It can be difficult to regulate the throttle with too much power indoors. You end up hitting the ceiling. And now I'm attempting a maneuver that I wouldn't normally do through this newly decorated hallway here. But because these bumper packs are really effective, I don't have any worries about doing any damage as I hit another newly decorated wall there with no damage at all. And now I am purposefully going to fly into the mirror to show you that you don't actually lose any control of the quad either when you bash it into things. There is a downside though to this bumper and that is its strength. So. I flew this quadcopter quite a lot after this video, and I had a really bad crash about this point, funnily enough. And unfortunately, that front right bumper snapped off, and now the bumper's broke. Now, normally that wouldn't be a problem, but you can't buy any spare parts for this one at the moment. So now I'm stuck with a broken bumper. So what I have decided to do is remove that bumper pack, because it's quite heavy, actually. And I think that it's going to fly a bit better without it. Of course, that restricts me to where I can fly it indoors because I now have to be careful where I bash it into things. And you can see that we have those LED lights shining through to that bumper pack, which is quite nice. Yeah, it flies really nice indoors. This one, it's just a shame about the spare part. You can't buy any blades for it either. But threading the needle with this one is really nice. And you get about a five to six minute flight time, depending on how much vigorous flying you do. And it's really easy to put this in a tight spot. Look at this. I figured I'm going to check out these quadcopters on the wall. And it did it no problem. And I wasn't worried about smashing it up. So there you go. That is my review of the Ishin X73. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll put a link in the description if you wish to buy one. As always, thanks so much for watching. Please continue to subscribe. Cheers.